Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues A to Z, which we're playing as Cherokee Nation, which I might have played as before, but we're landing playing as Standhope Shadow Mountain, so we're led by a bunch of intellectuals with uh, national spirits investigating the unknown. We're support of our people. And three nations straight center, but we got smoke and fire. When the bombs drop, we are prepared. A collective effort of all of our people brought together funding, scientific knowledge, engineering prowess, and the spiritual guidance to keep us safe underground while the smoke and fire wash over the earth, but emerging from the earth once more. As our earliest ancestors emerged from the ground in the time of the legends to claim these lands, so we did we once more. I'm going to talk about bottle caps and whatnot, but how does cap system work? We have no idea. Just kidding. Maybe, or am I? The time of smoke and fire. Our forefathers called the Great War the time of smoke and fire. We survived by being prepared. The smartest people in our community foresaw war coming and predicted it would be quick and end in total devastation on both sides. We built shelters, the mother mounds, not quite vaults, but good enough to let us survive comfortably with good enough, enough good stored to bridge the time we needed to spend underground. What do we have in abundance? Food? Entertainment. Weapons. I like the entertainment because stability is king. The accord. Separate in the land, but together in spirit, we wrote down everything we needed to get our nation into the future. We knew we could not stay forever underground, but the surface was too dangerous for a while directly after the bombs dropped. How long do we stay underground? Five years? Ten years? Twenty years? Twenty years it is. And then we look down here. How far can we go with science without restraints? Um, but I want to do this one first because this is good, a, a very good amount of political power. Um, so with these, doing these ones is only 12 days. Very fast. Well, our nations have worked together for a long time now. Large-scale cooperation projects were a rare thing. Maybe it's time to change that. The corresponding folks will also be completed for the other ones, for other nations like this. Uh, original Great Plains Federation member, 150 political power, while everyone else gets 25. And these folks are kind of complete with everyone else doing them within our little faction here, but there's no r real point to rush through these, it seems. Um, every Great Plains Federation member adds three infrastructure to the capital province. You get one if you do this one first. Or the original one gets three. Which is not bad. Two. Um, but there's... You get 500 manpower there, but it's not a huge issue. It's a little bit of an issue, but it's not that big of an issue. Uh, the Court of the First People's Junction. Efficient and a protracted, uh, protected construction allowed us to stay in contact with other mound, other mother mounds while we were underground. As soon as we decided to come to the surface again, we contacted the first other groups to come together to discuss how to proceed further. This ended in an assignment the Court of the First People's Junction. What was the most important concept we wrote down? Safety or freedom? Ooh, that's a little bit more political power. Is that really going to be cost? In 100 days, that gives us two political power. In 100. In 1,000 days, that's 20 political power. Yeah, I just can't see it being worth it. Safety. It's going for everyone's not bad, but it's also okay. Uh, it's not bad, but... Clear out the raiders. Chrome archives, which isn't bad. But none of these are bad. They're not like, I have to get these. But science without restraints. How to deal with the ethics and morals in the process of scientific endeavor has been a long-standing question. Maybe we should decide on an answer. Economic growth through open the pit, the boon. Um, and also addressing the local situation, too. Um, you need a total of 12 points for support for two factor factions in your nation in this branch. It is required to later unlock more focuses. Plan ahead accordingly so you don't lock yourself out of something you might want. Which is pretty normal. But I don't want to go through here because it sounds, it sounds like a lot of fun. Look at all that pee-pee. Um, so much we can do here. That's good for stability, though. Uh, trade genius. Don't want this political power. Weigh the land. It's not bad. But we're probably going to go with the Golden Gecko for more political power and stability. Uh, nothing here for Research Advisor, which kind of sucks. Local Sheriff's not bad. This is a little different um, with the Cherokee Nation here. So. Uh, do we have anyone here? Oh, what's that survivor? Raider Tactics. Honestly, I may just try to go to war with the last patrol as fast as possible. For fun reasons, of course. Just for fun. Um, let's see. Scavenging, sure. Produce consumer goods. That's fine. We can purchase the caps. You bet we will. Because these are the shape of things that come. Arms workshops, civilian workshops. Psychic nullifiers. It's not bad. But you get sky hellions. Sophisticated air tech and vertebrate schematics. An office for unusual research. Project Utenka. Well, let's see what, what happens when we go this way. The Ofer is the home of the researchers that tend to think outside the box. Sometimes so far outside the box that they're in a completely different box and that cannot be actually, actually described with their current understanding of reality. And then they do that make that box explode. Project Utenka. Oh, Project Utenka is one of the things coming out of Ofer. 
Technically a series of different sub-projects, all based on the supposability of a mythological creature from our legend, the Great Horn Snake Uktena. Uktena. However, it pronounce it. Other days is not bad. Uh, but we have Ulun Suti Bots. Utenka's Gaze. Utenas. I keep saying Utenka for some reason. Serpent Scales. Power Armor Hardness. Interesting. And Pestilence. Uh, pestilent Breath. So that's not bad either. So we got some real good options here, but um, we got Ohm's Laws done and whatnot, which is good too. I'm not sure which land action we're going to go down yet, so we're going to wait first, <clears throat> and then assessing the local situation too. If we want to continue to improve, we can carry favor with one or all the major groups in the nation. We have some options on how to accomplish this, but how far can we go? Not a research is as clean as sterile as the laboratory suggests. Some experiments require certain practices that would be frowned upon by the general populace. We can limit ourselves to follow a strict ethical and moral compass, or we can take that compass and treat it as a mere rough guideline that can be followed at will, but sometimes the most interesting discoveries are to be found off the beaten path. We have to ask ourselves, how far can we go? How much restraint should we allow show in research? Science knows no restraints. Maybe that compass idea thing is a good idea. All the way. Visions of an unknown woman. We received a report last night about two hunters. We received what they call a vision. After a rather unsuccessful hunt, they were prepared to head home when they heard some strange noises seemingly coming from everywhere at once. Looking for the source of that noise, they spotted a woman that suddenly appeared like an illuminated shadow a few dozen meters away from them. She was wearing loose robes and carrying bundles of grain. Cautiously, the hunters approached her. Before they could get too close, she only said the words, Come to me, pointing westward. At this point, a map appeared next to her in thin air, looking similarly ethereal to her. The hunters said they were certain at times that it showed the location of the end of the Arkansas River, and then the woman disappeared again in a flash of light. The hunters ran back to their apples as fast as they could to report what they'd seen. There, there has been a lot of discussion what this vision means. The Choctaw storyteller said that this event bears a striking resemblance to one of our ancient legends. The Cherokee Council of Scientists and Engineers say the vision could be reasonably easily achievable, given the right technical know-how and resources. But all this means that something or someone went to great lengths to bring this message to us. Too much effort for this would be a simple trap. Even if it would be somewhat of an undertaking to make the trip, chances are the result will be worthwhile, even if just to satisfy our curiosity. Time to plan an expedition. The shape of things to come. The Cherokee are currently only a fraction of what they could be. The nation will be expanded once we expand the map to give them more opportunities to proclaim people or technology, maybe even go beyond that. Track it nullificator. Well, unleash pestilent breath, serpent scales. Well, what do we want? Armor hardness. Well, decision. Go into this one. The Uk Tenas. Here's one. I'm gonna read this one earlier, but. It's supposed to have diamond lodged in its head. The Olon Suti. Are we managed to gain access to a diamond supposed to be the greatest one one to work in the tribe? Well, we don't have magical crystals, but we do have robots can do, build whatever we want. Right now, we're watching as the train choir is chain choir. Beating the crap out of the National Guard settlement encampment, or the last patrol. So we're having a good time watching them. We're just kinda waiting for them to go to war with those guys. So this this way we can go and expand our lands. If we can take out the chain choir, well then we can take out more of Oklahoma, maybe even more Texas. And that'd be a pretty darn nice thing to do, so. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of time between the, the fade in, fade out for here, from here and the last one, but Sky Hellions? This high tech plane was just sitting there in an underground facility, completely ignored. Just look at this piece of art. If we manage to replicate it, not, even if not perfectly, what force are we a force to be reckoned with in the sky? Oh, someone just got this one done, so. Mm, anything we really care about here? Honestly, not too much. Yeah, these are just all okay, like I said earlier. Uh, which one do I want? Clear the local the river of local fauna. That's not bad. Spread the silly dwellers. Well, there are many rivers crossing our nation that play a significant part in our nation's economy and infrastructure. But large swaths of them are still being played by marlocks and other critters. We need to get rid of them and make sure it work, uh, uh, work and travel safe for everybody. Well, I think we're, I'm actually for this one. For we could do clans. We could do support city dwellers. For me. I, it sounds like it makes more sense for us maybe to be supporting the city dwellers just because we're an intellectual group and we need cities and hubs of intellect to prosper. So, I kind of want to support the city dwellers. City dwellers are more in line with the goal of a strong unified nation. To get in favor of them comes mostly down to shaking the right hands and making the right promises versus the clans. A significant part of the people of our nation lives in rural areas and are certainly self-governed and self-sustaining. We need to be sure that our decisions won't negatively impact the way of life while also trying to bring them closer to the fold. We can't be a powerful nation during these times where everyone's doing what they want. And uh, there goes free people. And uh, there goes that too. Um, here we grab some of this. Roach King, we're gonna grab what? Pioneer kits maybe? A bit too ahead of time. Can't do anything about tribal stuff, even though we have that option somewhat open to us. We'll go and do that real quick. And uh, I'll just do that one anyways. And then we'll go Civitas Clan Farmsteads. Support people, mostly manpower. 
Build the streets of rubble. Infrastructure construction speed. Blue clan housing. <clears throat> Which isn't bad. We're clan skyscrapers. Three infrastructure, two civvies. Or three civvies. You know the city dwellers live, and as the name suggests in the cities, very few of the pre-war skyscrapers and high-rises are actually inhabited. It's due to often travel stay of especially their upper floors. 200 years of the elements beating on those elements just led to some missing walls, class floors, and various other issues. If you just fix some of them, we'll open up a lot of space for further adventures. Calm beginnings. The first stretch of our journey has been rather calm so far. The weather's fine, and we're making good time towards our goal on the Arkansas River. <laughs> Though we barely have Federation land, so this is to be expected. And even, even beyond that, the influence of the last patrol can be felt. Even if they are not as powerful as they once were. But soon we'll travel to mostly unknown territory. No, who knows what will happen there? Onwards. So we're trying to travel. We went to war with these guys, but they're actually beating us up quite well. Which is not good for us. Um, so. Yeah, hey, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, we have Project Uctena. A series of sub-projects below the umbrella of the Uctena project. Some of the results of the project were of questionable nature, but it would soon be a shame that all, that all the effort go to waste. Use the Ulun Suti Pots for public works, gaining some goodwill by improving the living standards of our citizens. Uh, with our builder bots, will go a long way in not having our nation explode, uh, implode around us the next time we produce some scientific abomination. It's pretty nice. Now they want to join the war. Um, the United States are too mod on, but get the heck out of Dodge. We knew that the column couldn't last forever. We're third, roughly a third of the way up to our goal, and they encountered what we think are the ruins of Dodge City. Not only were we slowed down by ruins of buildings that have crashed into the river, we also noticed several carts hanging up from a few intact bridges we crossed under. Let's put the guards already on edge, people mentioning the spotting movement on the river shore that didn't make it any better. Nothing happened for a while until a shot from the ruin took ahead of a guard on the starboard side. The crew started to hunker down, guards went into cover and exchanged fire with an enemy they couldn't actually see. The captain put some strain on the engines to get out of the area as fast as we could. Faster. We honestly probably need their help and see what we can do in terms of uh, warfare and whatnot. This one, we need to release this extremely poisonous gas among our enemies. It kills us, it kills them in about a minute. I think stuff used to used to be outlawed by somebody, somebody, something like that. You get deadly missed, huh? There's this one, ten up gaze, but forging new paths first. We were clearly went some, some possibly old paths in the years since the war. Came across a partially flooded village that was now and snaked its way through. Local wildlife was not particularly fond of us passing through it, but it didn't pose any real threats to us. Marley lurks are hard to kill to do to their thick shells, but their pincers could not pierce or ship holes. The Marley kings were a different all thing altogether, though. But they're scarce enough among the regular Marley so we could pick them off easily, or early. Before the sonic attacks could harm anybody. But nobody was injured. Uh, we're happy to get past this area and move on to more open waters again. Let's roast Marley tonight. Level 2. So. Nice. Capture the warm? I think so be it. I might have him join, I'll see, I don't know. Death for everyone who inhales the tiniest amount of Uctena's pestilent breath. Yeah, that's doable. We're stalking. We saw, spotted some uh, untouched looking buildings on our port side, including a supermarket and a hardware store. We decided to stop and look and if we could find some useful supplies in it. We need found some, though. Uh, mm -mm. We also found out what they were thought were a couple of dead bodies instead of a mass of feral ghouls in the rusting state. The noise of our shopping trip woke them up and began to amble towards us. So, on a hasty retreat, that way, let's loot that we plan on getting out of the market. Better hungry than dead. So, he's learning, but I still don't know which way we want to go. Because it says we have bots and whatnot, but... The Ants of Mesmetron, codenamed Uctana's Gaze, will overload our enemies' both brains and send subliminal messages at the same time. Messages such as surrender peacefully, stop, or kill your friends. The third setting proved to be very favorite among the users during our preference survey. The audience. We finally read what that was our destination. Uh, we were greeted. My group of travel seemed to have expected us, uh, surprisingly. <clears throat> Um, uh, by uh, Mr. Andy Robot. They accompanied us to a grand hall that housed a giant woman. She was retching on something obscure by smoke and strange light, but it's clear that if she would stand up, that she would tower over many a building. It's definitely a uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, that our hunters saw in the night. Some of the scientifically minded people in her group quickly pointed out the projectors placed in the corners of the room. We could assume that the vision we received was done in a similar vein, though it's not quite clear where the origin of the projection was coming from during the event. The talk with the goddess Diana as the travels caught her was pleasant, but could not shake the feeling that she expected to be, to us to be more deferring and awed by our presence than we actually were. What we, what we were impressed, though, was, was the reason she brought us here. Need more manpower. 
Horses. Horses. Honest to God, horses. We were pretty sure that they weren't any more around. She basically confirmed the suspicion by saying that these horses were specifically produced to survive in the wasteland by some machines hidden away in a secret place. And they're a gift to us. She had to quickly figure out. We had to quickly figure out the logistics of putting them on her boat somehow and keeping them safe on the long trek back home. Also, some doubts became loud among the crew and expedition members about why she would even gift us something like this. What were motives? We're not sure. And hope she wouldn't ask for a favor in return at some point. They'll look a gift horse in the mouth. Do we have horses? Civilizations, Nightkins, Monsters, Plants, Lock Keepers. Oh, Bird of Birds, yeah. What's that? Desperados are here helping us out, but. Getting more stability is always a good thing. Always, always, always. Oh, that's not cool. Serpent Scales. The horn snake is supposed to be not in bone, well, except on the specific spot of his body. Potential weak bones like seem like a bad idea, but uh, now nah, invulnerability seems like a good idea in general. <clears throat> Looked in his gaze. The gaze of the snake said today has confused people. Curiously enough, technology may making this already exists in the form of mesmetron. We did find some older prototypes designed for us that are harder to use, having at least a troll strapped to the user's head, but there are way more effective methods. Gosh. Yeah, we'll probably call him in. But is that it for uh, all that? Because we do a deadly mist, and this one. Oh, look at this. We lost some stability. We can try it again. We can do both. I don't, I don't think we'll get anything out of it, but we can try it. Give it a couple days, see what happens. See what happens, see what happens. So at this point, I might just go with uh, our basic land, normal land doctrine. Um, Asymmetric warfare it would be nice. What is this? Uh, wasteland tactics, but we don't have horses. This claw frosty is not bad, but still. So it looks like there's not much else here, and they broke through our lines, which means I've got to do some funky stuff here to make sure we don't completely die. Or they actually did that too, which actually. Might actually have worked out way better for us in the end, but yeah. Okay. Sure, why not? Because we don't have anyone here, a research advisor, which really sucks for us, but whatever. Alright, just go here. Come on! Almost there! Now we do have a cup of peach tea here. Actually, lemon ginger tea. If anything. Nice. Mm hmm. Solomon Solomon, huh? Well, this is our field commander, though. Looks like we're going to struggle here a little bit, but it looks like we'll probably get them done and taken care of. We'll do that one. Help needed. Well, we did manage to kill out the rivers, it was neither quick nor easy. We lost a good amount of men that didn't stay far enough away from what lurked below the surface. Clearly, we were less prepared than we thought. We should look for help. And the rivers of commerce? Fishing and trading along the rivers was always a good key to survival. But the water was being a lot safer now. We can invest into them to get a lot more use out of them. So those clan famsteads. Ah, oh, clearly the streets are rubble. So our city is getting point, from getting from point A to B. It's a serious struggle due to collapsing buildings and various other debris blocking streets and walkways. If we don't want people to make a short trip through the sewers, up and down a three-story building and inside down... Um, Slide down a zipline just to buy food on one street over. We need something about that. And here we're at, everybody. We're just trying to beat up these guys here. We're not doing so great. They're not going to be allowed to murder our forces, but we'll probably be allowed to murder them, maybe. 
Um, hopefully I don't get connected here. Uh, they're still kind of surrounded, which is nice. Um, so trying to fight up here as well, just a little bit. We're doing okay, not great, as you can see. Good, pushing them in. You gotta push them in even further. As long as they don't get connected here, that's all that really matters. Keep them in place. Keep them in place and beat them up there. We're running out of manpower, so we'll probably raise conscription level already on settlement protection, which is not very much. Way some militia would be good though. Keep them in place. Completely surrounded. Should do okay, but our, our guys just kind of suck. Dude, why why do our guys suck so much? You know what? Start doing some damage. There you go. Now that now we're actually doing okay. Look at that. What is this? Pipe? Oh, we're out of pipe. Oh crap, we're out of guns. It's not good. Hey, we broke over here, but then we left. That's not ideal. Nice. Three divisions left. We lost quite a few guys, so. Do have housing? There we go. Keep that tower right there, because that's going to be very, very important. We not quite encircled in there, but whatever. And... Crop rotation? Sure, why not? We do have special forces division as well, which is nice. Hey, we finally got him. And we didn't need anybody else's help, which is good. Not bad. I guess we'll go to Painter Rock next, because that's like the next big group besides these guys down here. So we'll go to War of them next. And... Cool. Cherokee Nation. We're doing rivers of commerce uh, by foreign mercenaries. The quick way of doing it uh, is spending a good amount of money getting someone else to do the job for, for us from now on. There are enough hardy woke up folks coming through from the area looking for work. Some are willing to probably patrol the rivers. Train hunters. The way it requires more work is training people specifically for tracking hunting down all those critters. They may not be ready immediately, but it'll pay off in the long run. Expand a river fleet. No, no description. Defend river banks. Rivers have one big disadvantage. Uh, we can't rely on other people from using them too. So to prevent them from using just sailing up down river settlement and stealing your stuff and burning down, we need to build some defenses there. Clear out the raiders, huh? What's this? An unpleasant fellow called himself the Lord of the Pit and his gang made their home in the abandoned pit. Over the years, they remade the former place of luring into a veritable fortress. A joint effort between our nations militaries is necessary to oust them from that place. I eh, can try out that one real quick. Our divisions kind of suck. But, oh, calm beginnings. Wait, what? Uh, I read that one earlier, so onwards, I guess. I mean, we did that once. And we have horses now. It just randomly appeared, which is kind of weird, but okay. Um, do we have a navy already? Do we have a ship? No, we did not. Okay. Nice. Cool. Cool. I'll talk about the pit stuff, I guess. Get us conviction. Oh, well, there's an apocalypse. Pretty normal. And what else? Little Brothers of War. Oh. The first, first full scale attack or stick ball match it took a while to get going. The various versions of the rules that are aforementioned by the participants and judges and nobody could agree on a single one. So I wanted to go with the lacrosse rule set since they had the most comprehensive rule set of all variations surviving the war. I just want to go back to more traditional versions that got passed down through the generations. In the end, a weird mix of multiple rule sets were adopted as the new official stick ball rules. The game didn't last a good four hours and ended with a brawl because one team didn't agree with the final score all in all. Everyone agreed that they all had a good time should repeat as soon as possible. Good journey for warriors. Maybe all strategies translate to actual war, take infantry technology. Honestly, I don't mind doing land action because we need to get uh, quicker up on that, but uh, cool. Organized scavenging teams. Well, we're pretty much going to go probably with that route. Uh, we're up in coal mines. Uh, this one's better overall. You get more factories. I like that more. Clan advisors. Traditional values. Artisan. Or the new expansion. Oh, that's not bad. But we're going to go this one. Organized scavenging teams. A lot of pieces of machinery and vehicles in the varying states of functionality just lying around the corner. Under our, under our cities. On news and on claim, we need to send out dedicated teams of scavengers and mechanics to come everything we own for anything that can be either repaired or for a purpose. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you what else we can do with the Cherokee Nation. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.